NCAA Football 14 was the last of the college football series, but we are officially getting a reboot in this game probably within the next two, three years. But that does pose a question. Is NCAA 14 really the greatest NCAA football game? My guy Uncle Sam's Reject went on Twitter and said NCAA 14 isn't the best NCAA. People would easily forget it if it wasn't the last one. It kind of makes you think, doesn't it? You know, you think back to the PS2 era with all the features they had in those games and a lot of that stuff was removed in the PS3, Xbox 360 era. That's why a lot of people do play PS2. But then you look at other sports titles like College Hoops 2K8. People talk about legacy mode and they say how deep it is, but would they really say that if it was, wasn't the last game of its series? And then there's NCAA Basketball 10, a game that I have played and I have enjoyed. But if it wasn't the last game, I probably wouldn't have touched it at all. So that brings me to NCAA Football 10 on the PS3, Xbox 360 era. A game that has really been glossed over and people just do not talk about at all. But the thing is, a lot of the PS2 era features and a lot of the features that should have stayed in the game are still in this one from NCAA 14. So today, we will go over the 20 features from NCAA Football 10 that make this the greatest NCAA football game nobody knows about. So let's get this started. Let's start with the three-man commentary team. Now, on PS2, it was in the game, but going to NCAA 14, it was removed. Let's just take a listen. Everybody, this is Brad Nessler with Kirk Herbstreit, Lee Corso, and Aaron Andrew. It's time for some college football action. Having all three of those guys in the booth definitely changed, changes things, and it kind of adds, you know, kind of a dynamic gameplay and kind of an atmosphere, not with just the crowd and the stadium noise, but having a commentary team who kind of all play off each other, they all have opinions. I love that. Then the second feature I'm going to go over is the pregame impact player. Now, in the old PS2 eras, this was in the game. They kind of highlighted a guy, you know, getting a handoff. It was a running back, you know, throwing a pass if it was a quarterback. And in the PS3, Xbox 360 era, it was eventually removed in NCAA, I believe, 13 and 14. That is actually still an NCAA Football 10. They will briefly talk about this player and what they bring to the table. And even if they just had a big game last week. The next feature I will go over is Ask Cors Corso with Play pages of players now this is interesting because usually ask Corso on the ps2 era you just hit the button it gives you a play but in this game you hit ask Corso it brings up pages of plays now sometimes these pages are duplicated like four deep quarters here as you can see but still getting four pages that you can choose from and you can also change the package as well the next feature I want to go over is fight after contact, which is a very underrated feature. Now, when you're running the football, you know, you make contact, you kind of get into an animation, you go down. But in this game, you could actually fight after you get hit with contact. So you could actually fight forward. But be careful, because if you fight forward too much, your guy might fumble. That brings us into the next feature, the frequency of injuries. Now, this is a very interesting one because in college football and football in real life, there's pretty much an injury on almost every single play. In this game, it kind of brings it to life. It's not over, you know, exaggerated where, you know, there's major injuries on every play, but pretty much you'll see one on every drive where, you know, a player goes down and it probably will be out for a player might be out for a couple plays. It could be a significant injury, but for the most part, it's pretty much realistic. Like a guy might be out for a series or maybe out for a quarter or so and come back. And I like that because it's realistic. Football, there's a whole lot of injuries. The next feature I wanna go into is custom button mapping. This is interesting. If you're used to playing the PS2 era, you can always switch your controls to mimic those. So let's just change sprint right here. It's at R2, let's sprint it, let's change it to X. Now we're at the PS2 era. You can see this right here on the screen. You can map it the way you want to, and that is awesome because if you're playing a game and you're used to some controls, just change the mapping. It'll be right there for you. 
The next feature I want to go over is different game lightings. Now, I'm going to show you three different games here. This is the Red River Rivalry here, Oklahoma and Texas. You can see it's kind of a darker atmosphere. It's kind of night. And then we move on to Miami and Florida State. This is like a dusk game. You can just see like it's not well lit in the stadium. You know, you can kind of see the sky. It's kind of dusk. It's kind of dull, you know, and that's kind of pretty cool that you can have a dusk game. And then you move into this game. This is a straight night game, but the stadium lights are so bright in this one. LSU versus Utah gives three different lightings. That is so awesome. Some I didn't notice in the game earlier, and it's a pretty cool feature. Next are players of the game. Now, I say players of the game because at the end of each game, it's, it's during the game when it's still going on, each team will get a player of the game and that will be highlighted across the screen. So not only will you see, you know, at the end of the game, like NCAA 14 does, one player of the game, you will get two players of the game, one for each team, no matter what the score is, which is pretty awesome in my book. The next feature we will go over is additional blocking attributes. Now, in Madden 20, I believe it was, maybe it was Madden 19, they started introducing new run block and pass blocking attributes. But these aren't new. These have been in these old games. Run block strength, run block finesse, pass block strength, pass block finesse. Now it's pass block footwork in this game and run block footwork. These are all attributes in this game that are removed in modern games. Madden has it. I hope they bring it back for the new NCAA. Now let's move on to some recruiting features. The first one is no low lock cheese. This is one of the features in NCAA 14 that a lot of people hate because in recruiting, yes, you can do whatever you want. But if you're like me and want to create a realistic type dynasty, you can't always, you know, get the best players to come to your school. NCAA 14 makes that super easy. You basically just sort by guys who are locked at a low percentage, and that will show you who's not close to be committing. You can just add them to your board and recruit them. Can't do it in this game. You can just see how interested they are in your school. And that moves us on to recruiting. Phone call recruiting is amazing. Now, in this game, you have options. You can either quick call a prospect, which they will do everything for you. You can call a prospect, so you have to do everything. We'll go through all three scenarios here in this video. So let's call this kicker, Thomas Johnson. Let's go to quick call. Now you have 10 hours of recruiting to use, and you can use it all really on one recruit if you really want to, but be careful because they can hang up on you. So let's just quick call this guy. You can go from five to 60 minutes, 75 if you're offering a scholarship, and it looks like we just unlocked one thing. Yes. You have to unlock what they're interested in. Now let's just call, try a long, quick call. 75 minutes, that's 15 minutes, including the scholarship. And you can just see we hired, we unlocked a whole lot of stuff. Campus lifestyle is high for him. Academic prestige is most for him, most important. And a large interest gain in campus lifestyle. So you can just see after that call, we unlocked a lot of things of this, what this recruit is interested in. Now let's go after quarterback David Thompson. Let's actually make the phone call. Now you can see this screen right here. You have to recruit for your school. We are controlling Temple right now, or you can recruit against other schools, along with offering a scholarship, making a promise, and scheduling a visit. Now we're not able to schedule a visit just yet, but you can just see here are all the prospects values and how we rank as a school. Early playing time, it's an A+, plus, so you probably want to hard sell that once you unlock it if, it, if it's valuable to him. So right now, we don't really know. Let's find his pitch in this, and it looks like we try to find his pitch. It's low, so we keep trying to sway it, and look what happens. He ends up hanging up on us, so he does not care about early playing time, but if you keep talking about it, the prospects will just hang up. That is just awesome. So now let's move on to the Dynasty News Hub. Now, the issue I've had with NCAA 14 is that it's pretty focused on your team. You don't really get to know other teams around the nation. And yes, they have menus where you can see like little stories, but not like this. I can go to the, the News Hub, go through all ESPN news headlines and keep up with other teams. 
I can also go to campus news and look at everything that's happening on our campus and things that have happened. But then I can go to national spotlight as well. And this will give me more news. So I can go to my weekly schedule. It'll give me a quick, you know, highlight of who's playing this week. Top 25 polls, who's moving up conference standings who's really moving up in each conference and it will not be limited to just the bigger conferences you know the power fives they will also have stories on the mac and the mwc the mountain west conference and the Sun Belt, which is awesome because not only do you feel immersed in your little bubble but outside of your bubble as well now moving on to the off season, new recruits in the off season. This is actually a pretty awesome feature. It's pretty small, but I like it. At you know, when you start the dynasty in preseason, you can already see that, you know, there are a pro there's a prospect database. You can see all of the guys that are there for you. But in this game in the off season, there's more added. So there's guys that you haven't seen yet which get added to the database. In the PS2 era, there were multi-week uh, recruiting in the offseason. That actually does exist on the PS3, Xbox 360 era in this game. You can just see we're advancing on in one week. We already have three commits. But that doesn't mean our recruiting is over. We have to keep recruiting each week. And we get 10 hours of recruiting each week that we do advance. And from there, you just keep going on and on. In this game, there's also soft and verbal commitments. You can see this is in the off season. We have two soft commitments for our top two players. That does not mean that they will uh, end up committing to our team because I want to give you an example. Here is Eric Watson, who ended up being at the top of our board here, and he's soft committed to Ball State. Now, I'm like, well, let's see if we can sway him. So we do a quick call, 75 minutes and 15 minutes to a scholarship. You can just see we had a large interest gain, proximity to home. And he actually ends up decommitting verbally from uh, Ball State and commits to Temple instead. So you can also sway guys after they verbally commit. That moves us on to recruit visit pitches. Now, the one thing I love about this is that you actually have to decide what happens and what you talk about on the recruits visit now this is in the off season and in the regular season during the regular season this is the same menu you get to basically pitch what you want to recruit to the pitch and if you end up winning the game in the regular season and pitch what's most important to him and you have good grades you're gonna get an a plus visit he might even commit and then in the off season this is what it looks like it's just an in-home visit and you just basically pitch what you want based on what the recruit likes now then there's promises to recruits now this is a feature that is in ncaa 14 but it's used a little differently in ncaa football 14 you basically use it to stop a player from transferring from your school but here you actually use it in recruiting it's also important too because you start out with five promises solid playing time first year conference championship freshman all-american team winning record versus rivals and no red shirt first year on campus it's important that if you do use any of these promises that you keep them up you uphold them because if you don't your coach prestige will go down and recruits will now start to realize that you're not going to live up to your promises your grades will go down as a school so you want to make sure you follow through on these because they all will show in a pending menu as well to make sure you remember what you promised then there's incoming freshmen have higher overalls. This is something that I really, really did not notice until I went back and played this game. Let's just look at Eric Watson, who we just stole away from Ball State. A 76 overall two-star freshman. He was the number 54 ranked running back. Now I went and looked at probably like the number 40 ranked for running back. He was a 69 overall. I mean, that's kind of cool that you have lower ranking guys that end up being, you know, higher overall. Let's just compare that with the lowest five star I saw in this. This was versus, I mean, he went to Tennessee and he was a five star receiver. He was 82 overall. So there could be 87, 88 overall freshmen that come in right away. The next feature I want to go over is four star JUCOs. You know, in NCAA 14, the highest JUCO that you can possibly get is a three star. And even at that, they're not ranked in the top 20, not even the top 30, like the top 40 at their position as a JUCO. 
And here you can see the number sixth ranked running back was a Juco and he was a four star. He comes in at 78 overall. That's awesome. I love that because now, you know, Juco's aren't like overpowered or anything. They have to actually be a four star rating to really have that high rating. Then there's off season training grades. The last feature I will go over today. Now in the off season, there are training results just like every other year. But you can see there is minimum improvement, which you saw with Luke, the receiver. He went up not a lot in everything. There's moderate improvement. As you can see with Billy Matthews, the guard, he went up plus one in run block, plus two in impact, plus three in run block strength, and plus two in run block footwork. But then you move up to Brown, the guard, Gary Brown here. He was the most improved. He gets a grade as most improved because his pass blocking went up quite a bit plus four in pass blocking his run block only went up two but what he really needed to work on was his pass block his pass block strength also went up plus four and it propelled him to have a plus six overall rating in the offseason actually pretty cool to see you know how well did your guys improve over the offseason and the minimum guys end up you know only progressing maybe plus two plus one you won't see a lot of plus threes and a lot of attributes so that's going to do it for the 20 features that make this maybe the most, the best NCAA football game that nobody really knows about. I really love this game. It's been a lot of fun. I've been playing it off and on. Shout out to my boy, Uncle Sam's Reject. He has a series on Colorado State right now. So go check that out. And I wanted to show you guys the features in this game because a lot of you guys play NCAA 14. You play the PS2 era but don't skip over this game. This game is a lot of fun. It gives you the modern spin on NCAA football games with the PS2 features. Not all of them, but a lot of cool ones that people definitely often miss. So that's gonna do it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do plan on having some type of series in this game, so you don't wanna miss that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope I kind of persuaded you to pick this game up and give it a try, and I'll see you next time. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. He unloads it. This defense is in big trouble if they continue to give up touchdowns in the air like that. Yeah, that's four now that they've given up. Looks like this quarterback has their number today. Getting money, I got time to get it. Talking on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in a dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the four or five on the wet side. But I'm from the east side. This how we slide. This how we ride. Yeah, yeah. This how we ride.